Baruchim Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Tonight's lecture will be uh, on reflections on the holidays. Um, again, we just uh, finished all the holidays of uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret. So the holidays are over. The question becomes, how do you feel? Are you glad that they are over? Are you what we call Yontavalt? One could look at the Yom Tovim, the holidays, in different ways. Again, what was the purpose of the holidays? I think there are many answers. Also, I think there may have been a big difference in how we've seen things between the time that the temple stood and from the time that they have been destroyed. In all cases, I think that the holidays are a way for us to step back and take a good and honest look at our lives. I would have thought that going up to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, would have been an overwhelming spiritual experience. Being in the Holy Temple, seeing all the miracles, feeling the div presence of the divinity of God, all the sacrifices and all the rituals, it really would have been hard to imagine that one would not be moved to feelings of tshuva, of repentance. However, we cannot forget that every person and every generation is tested in its own way. During the first temple era, there was a great temptation of idol worship. The second temple era also had its challenges with foreign occupation and baseless hatred. Life was not meant to be easy. It was meant to be a challenge in whatever generation you exist. Our mission was and always will be to overcome those challenges, both personally as a nation, but in that respect, very little has changed. We begin this period of tshuva with the 30 days of El, which leads us into the 10 days of what we call the Aser Shemei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance, and then to the holiday of Sukkot. We move from trepidation to joy. This is not unlike our perspective as Jews. Our days proceed from night to day, whereas the rest of the world goes from day to night. No matter what is happening in our lives, we believe that any darkness, so to speak, troubles in our lives, will always move towards light, to goodness and success. However, we always need to know with complete certainty that there is a Father in Heaven who loves us, and the basic theme of all that happens to us, especially during the holidays, is based on that love. There are different ways to express one's love for someone. There are words, I love you, or a kiss, a sign of affection. Then there can be what we call a loving gaze, looking into someone's eyes. And finally, a loving embrace, bringing someone close and hugging them, holding on. These four ways of expressing affection can be connected to the holidays. On Pesach, we celebrate our redemption from slavery, and the theme is speech. Vihigadatolavincha. And you shall tell your child, using our speech to express our loving feelings for someone, saying, I love you. Then there's Shvuot, the commemoration of our receiving the Torah directly from God on Mount Sinai, which is called the marriage between God, the groom, and his beloved bride, the Jewish nation. This can be connected with a kiss, a sign of affection, personal, between a chassan and a kala a bride and a groom. The period from El through Yom Kippur can be connected to, loving, to a loving gaze, looking deeply into a loved one's eyes. Not only physically, but on a spiritual level. We know that the eyes are the windows of the soul. And as we say in the prayer of Nisan Tokif, a very special prayer during the Yom Kippur Rosh Hashanah period, where it states that God is compared Kavakaris Roa Adro, like a shepherd who inspects his flock, gazes. So too, during this period of judgment, God still looks at us with love and affection. The holidays conclude with the holiday of Sukkot, a time when we leave our homes and enter into this temporary dwelling, a sukkah. The only mitzvah that we have where we enter and are surrounded by the mitzvah itself and embrace. 
We come to God, our Father, and he wraps his loving arms around us. He hugs us, both individually and on a national level. A father loves all his children, and God expresses that love through the midst of Sukkah, a father's warm and loving embrace. Now, the word joy, Simcha, is not mentioned at all in connection with the holiday of Pesach. It's mentioned only once in connection with the holiday of Shavuot. But joy is mentioned three times in connection with the holiday, the Chag of Sukkot. One can ignore a comment, move away from a kiss, and avert one's gaze. But once someone embraces you, both of you become one, a true sense of love and affection. And this is what all the holidays lead up to, for us to realize and acknowledge that there is a God in the world that loves us and wants us to reciprocate. He, like any parent, wants us to love him. As it says in the first line of the Shema Yisrael, the Ahavta es Hashem Elokecha, and you shall love the Lord your God. God wants to be relevant. He wants to be a part of our lives. He wants us to know and understand that without him, our lives can be difficult, if not impossible. With him in our lives, we have the ability to make it much easier. The Torah is an instruction manual. It helps us to navigate this minefield that we call life. But even if you can have all the proper information, you still have to do the work. This world is a place of action. Believing in God isn't enough. There's a story told of the Tzemach Tzedek, who was the grandson of the Alter Rebbe, his grandfather, who brought him up. One night, <clears throat> the Tzemach Tzedek was leading the evening prayers, the Mariv prayer, and he did it in a very sad, melancholy melody. The Alter Rebbe scolded him, saying that praying with a sad melody to one's prayers was not acceptable. He said that a person can dictate his own mazel, his direction in life, happy or sad, by how he prays to God. We are the masters of our own destiny. We have, we have a saying in what type of energy will enter our lives. You know, there's a Hasidic thought that says, think good and it'll be good. Positive thoughts bring about positive results. I can promise you that God Almighty, who is a loving Father, has only good set aside for you this year. What we need to do is know and understand that good doesn't mean that we get everything that we want, that we never hear the word no. Not everything that we want is necessarily the best thing for us. Only God knows what is truly good. Most things that we receive quickly and with little effort are really not good. They are many times temporary fixes, band-aids. What we want in life is real and permanent goodness and happiness. So whatever God has decreed for us this year will be good. The only question becomes how will we perceive what occurs? Will we stay the course and let the complete goodness develop? Or will we give up before the process is complete? There is another saying, in the end, everything will be good. So if it's not good, it's not the end. You know, they tell a story about a king <clears throat> who wanted to conquer a city. And he laid siege to the city. And he attacked the city with his special forces, his commandos, and they were wiped out to the man. So he sent his cavalry against the gate of the city to enter. They were killed out to the man. He then sent the infantry, again, wiped out to the man. There was no one left, so they sent their cooks, supply people, and they told them to conquer the city. And sure enough, the gate of the city fell, and they were able to conquer the city. And when the general came to see the king, 
expecting a jubilant king, what he saw was a king that was very perplexed. Didn't seem happy at all. And the general said to the king, your, your Highness, I thought you'd be thrilled. He said, I'm confused. Are you going to tell me that my cooks and supply people are the best troops that I have? They're the ones that conquered the city? My commandos couldn't do it? My cavalry couldn't do it? My infantry couldn't do it? But they did? How does that make sense? And the general smiled and looked at the king and said, you don't understand, your Highness. Commandos did their job. The cavalry did their job. The infantry did their job. You could have sent the Girl Scouts against the, the gate of the city. One more finger, that's all it took. One more. And they supplied that. And so too, in the end, everything will be good. If it's not good, it's not the end. We always need to remember that success teaches us nothing. Failure, on the other hand, <laughs> teaches us a lot. We may not volunteer for pain, but when it comes, it does get and keep our attention. God, as a benevolent father, sometimes gives us what we call tough love. But it is love nonetheless. And that's why we prefer to God as Hashem Elokeinu, the Lord our God. The Lord is mercy. God, in that form, is strict judgment. But it's always together. Without it, we cannot grow. Good judgment comes from experience. And experience comes from bad judgment. So the bottom line, this year will be great if we allow it to be so. Happiness is a choice. Choose it. Smile. Think positive thoughts. Be proactive. Don't wait for success to come to you. Move towards it. <laughs> it may surprise you just how close it really is. It says, Simcha Peretz Geder that joy breaks down obstacles. And may we all together help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu quickly in our time. Enjoy the year. Thank you very much for coming. Shabbat Shalom.